we get started working on anything, we always want to remember that take the hydraulic vent cap loose and get the pressure off of it. Always make sure that the implement is sitting on the ground. And always, always, when you're taking a hose fitting loose, take it loose real slow. And if you feel that that thread is tight, you know there's pressure on there. So if you, if it comes loose and oil starts bleeding around it, that's great. But if that fitting is tight and you're taking that thing apart, you know there's pressure there. Stored energy in these hoses will kill you and it'll kill you dead. So make sure before you start, always vent the hydraulic tank always make sure the implements on the ground and whatever circuit that you're working on like we're working on the, the loader lift make sure that that loader lift is down you don't want you don't want somebody getting underneath of that if that implement was up and you take that hose off and that implement falls that stream of oil coming out of there is gonna oh man you don't even want to go there so always make sure and be safe before you start taking something apart so in this video, I'm going to show you a few things that I do to make uh, changing hydraulic hoses and things like that a little bit easier so you don't have to fight them so bad. These two lift cylinder hoses are bad. Something got in here and smashed them. And they go down and they make a turn and they come up and they come up inside where the battery is. So inside there, there's only enough room to stick one hand and get those hoses off that bottom end down there. So what I do is I take my new hose and I take Gorilla Tape and I get this natural bend in there because otherwise the hose is straight and there's no way to get it curled up and to get it started on the fitting in there with one hand. So if you just use a little piece of Gorilla Tape you can go down and go under the two other steel lines and get it where it belongs, where you can reach in there with one hand and get it started. The second thing, I just take a little piece of tape and I put on a, an elastic cord so that when I get it about where I want it, I'll hook this someplace to get the height about right, where you can reach in there with the one hand, pull it down, and get it started. So it really works pretty well. When you're done, you can reach down in here and, and uh, pull the tape off, cut it with a knife, whatever you want to do. It's not going to hurt anything for that little piece of tape to stay on that hose. But if you are if you really want to get it off of there, you can reach down in from either side, one hand at a time, and peel the tape off. Same way up here. This would be the last connection I make where you can get to it, peel the tape and the cord off, get the next hose, and, and go on down the road. So the other thing, too, is... You know, you're sitting down here on your hands and knees and you're trying to get back in this little cubby hole here to get this hose hooked on. So what I like to do is, you know, they sell a kneeling pad. What? I found this thing at Harbor Freight and it, it's a it's a creeper. It's a yard creeper. So you unsnap it on both sides and it folds down into a little yard creeper to lay on. It's got a little headrest on it. It was really inexpensive, but if you fold it up, you got double the cushion, and when you're in here on your hands and knees trying to get that hose off, it's going to make life a lot easier on your knees, especially when you get my age and your knees are already junk. So, I don't remember what it cost. It wasn't very much money. They're worth their weight in gold. So get you a little pad and lay it down there so when you get in spots like that, it doesn't kill you. So my next little tool here I made probably 15 years ago and I've been using it forever. I took a, a about a 15, 16 foot long, 1 8 inch stainless steel cable and I took, I've got one for JIC, this one here is for O-ring face. And I drilled a set of plugs just like what these are right here. You can buy these little kits for about 65 bucks. You can get them anywhere, and they come with a, a male and a female, and several of each, usually two or three or four or five of each, but it's really handy when you're taking apart a, a hydraulic hose. Once you get it apart, 
cap both ends of the machine so you don't get any dirt in there. And you know, there's O-ring and everything that you need. Well, what I did with this tool was I took a male and a female cap and I took and I drilled just a little bit, one, one size over an eighth inch, and I drilled those fittings and I put them on this cable. And there's all different sizes. Here's one, two, three, four, five. There's five different sizes on this one. And then at the end of that cable, what I did was I put on a washer, a flat washer, and I brazed or silver soldered the end of that to that cable. So that what this is for, you're sitting there thinking, what in the world is this guy building? Well, what this is for is when the hose is laying in the machine and it's wandering down through and you don't even hardly know where it goes, you take the end of this, you take one end off and you screw it on there and you thread it on there and then go find the other end of the hose. Well, as you start pulling and you pull it, pull the old hose out, you pull the cable in. And the cable goes through cable clamps and through this and through that until you get it to the other end. Hopefully there's not a lot of plastic ties. If there's plastic ties, usually you have to cut them off. But it makes it so easy to pull the old hose out and reroute it and put it back in again and you've got all these different sizes to put on there. So no matter what size the hose is, you've got one for O-ring face, you've got one for JIC, you pull the hose out, pull the new one, hook, undo this, when you get the hose out, after you get your hose, put your hose back on there and you pull your new hose back in with it. It makes life so easy and it's so simple and easy to build, you can build your own. But it's gonna save you a lot of time and a lot of headache. The only time I ever really ran into a problem was I had a Komatsu track hoe and down in the track frame they run their drive motor hoses all the way down to each drive motor in the back from the swivel valve in the middle and what they did was they put them in there in a, in a group. They pulled the whole group in at one time. Well that's alright. What I did was I went down there and I hooked on the, the end of one of them and I pulled the whole group out take the tie straps, cut the tie straps off, lay my new hose in there, put my tie straps back on, get on the end of that cable, and pull the whole group right back in there again. And it works really well. Rather than trying to fish one hose, you know, and it's tied in there, oh, it's, it's a nightmare. But And usually down there it's full of dirt and everything else. But really works well and it's a time saver it'll save you a lot of time especially if you get into something where the hoses are meandering down and around and through something and if you don't follow the exact way that that hose went chances are the next hose is probably not going to fit right or it's going to be too long or it's going to be too short or it's going to rub or chafe on something that's not what you want easy to make get you a drill press drill your fittings and guess what when you're all said and done, you will like it, and it didn't cost you a lot of money. The next thing was the caps and plugs. You can get, get online and get these JIC and O-ring face, you know, and you can get any kind of kit that you want to get, but it helps keep the dirt out. Not only if, are you going to use some to make your new tool with, but you got to keep the dirt out of your hydraulic system or you're not doing yourself any favors. The next thing I want to talk to you about was going and getting a hose made. So you go uptown and you get a hose made, the guy hands you the hose, you put the hose, you, you put the hose in the back of your car and you come back and it's like, oh boy, I heard the saw running where they cut the hose, right? There's, there's no caps on the end of this hose. It's a brand new hose, but there's no caps on it. So the first thing I want to do when I get a hose made anywhere is I'm going to take a blow gun and I'm going to blow down through that hose and if there's anything in that hose which would be little iron filings from them cutting the hose off or little rubber chunks from the hose, I don't want anything in my hydraulic system. So get you a, a blow gun and if it's too big wrap you a rag around the end of it and stick your blow gun on there and blow 
all that crud out of that hose so that you're not going to contaminate your hydraulic system. You can also take and take a can of starting fluid. A lot of times I'll take, once I blow through it originally, I'll take a can of starting fluid and I'll kind of let it, stand it up, spray it, let starting fluid run out of the end of it, and while it's still wet, give her another little blast of air and make sure that if there was anything in there that it got washed out. If you go someplace and you buy a hose, some people have certified clean hoses. If you go to Caterpillar and you get a hose from Caterpillar, the end of that hose will be wrapped with shrink wrap or it'll have a plug or a cap on the end of it. That's a certified clean hose. They take little foam plugs and stick inside that hose and they got a special little tool that blows that foam plug all the way through that hose and cleans that hose. So you don't have to worry about them. It's everybody else that you have to worry about. Always make sure that the hoses are clean. Always make sure that when you take something apart and you're gone for a little while that you cap your hoses and make sure no dirt gets in there or, or whatever. When you come back, you know, uh, let's say you had a hydraulic cylinder and that hydraulic cylinder you had it capped and the sun was shining on that hydraulic cylinder while you were gone. It was cool in the morning when you took the hose off, but now the sun's been shining on that cylinder and you got a caps on it. Always take those caps loose real slow because nine chances out of ten, that cylinder warmed up, that oil warmed up, and now there's pressure on the caps that you put on there. So when you take them loose, always take them loose a little bit at a time and make sure that, that the, the threads aren't feeling like they're binding. If they're binding, it's got a lot more pressure on there than what you think. But uh, be very careful with that. Be very careful with that. I'm going to show you this hose here. This hose come right off a store shelf. It's been sitting around here. I keep a lot of hoses around here. It's been sitting on the shelf. But if you look, this is the way I bought it. Brand new hose. There's no cap on the end of that fitting right there. None. So you know that there's dust and dirt and whatever else. You know, you sweep the floor and dirt, get, get dirt gets to flying around. You know it's inside that hose. So always take your hoses and clean up your hoses before you put them on. The next thing I wanted to show you, and I'm going to tell you a little story about it. It used to be back in the day, uh, worked on a lot of Caterpillar equipment, and the, the, the big excavators, we always had to take them apart to move them. So you, what I'd do is I'd go out there and I'd take off the bucket, the stick, and the counterweight, set them off to the side. Low boy truck would show up. You would load the bucket, the stick, the counterweight on one low boy, and then you'd walk the car body onto the second low boy. Well, in the process of doing that, you know, Caterpillar loves code 61 and code 62 ends. In the process of doing that, you have to take that machine apart. So one day the machine got delivered to the job and I was sitting there and what I always had was I had these plugs that would, they're code 62 plugs or code 61 plugs and they would fit just like the hose was on there and you'd tighten down the bolts and hold that clamp and that would keep any dirt out plus if somebody accidentally touched the lever it wouldn't shoot oil everywhere. But I'd always cap all that stuff off to keep the dirt out for transportation. So one day I'm out there and I'm standing on a, standing on the end of the machine and I'm, I'm getting ready to, I had the stick put on. Well, when you put the stick on it, you know, I'm up about eight feet high or so. So I'm standing on a ladder and what I would always do when I would take the fittings loose is I would always take the two that were closest to me and I would leave them tight. And I'd take the two farthest away from me and I would always loosen them up a little bit more than normal so that if anything ever happened when it blew that o-ring it would be blowing away from me so if I was standing here like this I'd take these two and leave these snug and these two on the top loose so that when it opened up it would open up like this and it would shoot oil that way instead of shooting oil back towards me does that make any sense so one day I was sitting out there and I had the stick on it and I was putting the getting ready to take the plugs out well the operator that was running the machine apparently touched that lever and charged that circuit with a lot of pressure the machine was shut off I'm taking the bolts loose and I noticed that there's a lot of pressure on them bolts so I knew I had pressure there 
So I took a rag and I laid a rag up on the two loose ones or the two snug ones closest to me and I started loosening up the other side. And that rag's laying around it like this and I'm just slowly loosening them up. And the next thing you know, off that, blew that O-ring out and that oil went flying up in the air. Oh man, did it go flying up in the air. Away from me, but it went flying up in the air. At the same time, the uh, superintendent on the job come pulling up there in his pickup truck. Well, I think you know what happened next. That truck got a bath in 10 weight hydraulic oil. <laughs> but anyhow, always, always, always be careful and stored energy. When you start taking these things loose, wrap a rag around them and take your time. There's nothing worse than to have hydraulic oil come flying out and give you a bath or anything else, anything like that. Always be careful because you, the only person that's going to look out for you is you. So be very careful with that. But code 61 and code 62 ends. The code 62 uses a flat O-ring. They will stand there and they will stretch and they'll keep that thing sealed up until the very last minute and then they go boo. Whereas the O-rings, they usually start giving up just a little bit at a time, but still they can pop and, and if you don't know which way the oil is going, you're going to be in trouble. Even though the machine shut off, that energy is stored in them tubes, them steel tubes and hoses, whatever, whichever, but always be careful with that. So I hope that uh, between the little tricks I showed you and some of the tools and and some of the things, I hope you learned something. That's what this is all about, is to try to teach people how to be safe and, and learn a little something. So, appreciate you all watching. Thanks.